has come home The help is find hope The love is on the move When the father's in the room Prison doors swing wide The dead come to life Love is on the move When the father's in the room Miracles take place The cynical find faith And love is breaking through Where the father's in the room The Jericho walls are breaking Strongholds now are shaking Good morning, TFPC. We're so glad you're here with us on Palm Sunday. Why don't you stand with us as we worship this morning? When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see the mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me.
there's nothing to fear now for I am safe with you so when I fight I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high oh God the battle belongs to you and every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the And if you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. Thank you, God. Blood and righteousness. 
I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. In Christ alone, my cornerstone, the weak made strong in the Savior's love. And through the storm, He is the Lord, He's the Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face, I rest on His unchanging grace. Every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil. Oh, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the sand. alone and faultless stand before the throne hey, good morning pastor mike you may be seated hey good morning everybody happy palm sunday we are pumped excited that you're here to worship jesus with us my name is mike and it's my pleasure to serve here as lead pastor and at tfbc we're a neighborhood church where anyone anyone can take a next step towards Jesus. We want to be a spiritual home for you to belong to, to be brought in through Jesus to the heart of our Heavenly Father, to be developed for who God created you to be so that you can in turn serve, serve in our church, serve in our community, serve to change the world, to build the kingdom of God that he's doing through us together. Hey, if this is your first time here, or if it's your first time tuning in at TFBC at home, we are so excited that you're here. We want you to feel so welcome. And here's what to expect for the day. After I'm done, you're going to hear a little bit more about what's happening at church. We're going to hear about Easter and how you can get involved in Easter, how you can invite, how you can serve. We're going to have lots of guests here next week to celebrate the fact that Jesus is alive. The stone has been rolled away. And if the stone's been rolled away, all of our pain and shame and sin and hurt and guilt can be rolled away today. Easter's not about 2,000 years ago. Easter's about today, this moment. Jesus' power is available for you, for me, right now, today. So next week, we'll celebrate that. Two services, you're gonna hear more about that, 9 and 1030. And then we're going to sing some more songs. The words will be up on the screen. We're finishing up our Elijah series that God has power for his moment in your life today. So we would love to connect with you. If you're a first-time guest, if you're in the room, we have these cards. 
drop that off at the east entrance. You can text also, or if you're online at home, you can click the link. We have a gift for you if you're in the room. We'd love to come alongside you in any way that we can, pray for you, uh, get you connected with other people that can help you, that can help develop you, that can be in your corner, that can develop a system of spiritual care for you so that you can live the life that God has you in right now. Well, let's take a moment right now and let's dedicate this time that we have together to Jesus. Heavenly Father, we're grateful that you have opened our eyes to your son, the cornerstone, the capstone, the keystone, the stone that you're building your church on, your kingdom on. And today, Jesus, we're, we, we think back to that Sunday over 2,000 years ago that you were welcomed in as a king of Israel, people shouting, Hosanna, save us. A, a Sunday that they had different expectations. They thought you were going to bring a physical kingdom. They thought you were going to make Israel great again. But you had a different plan. And that plan was to give your life, to sacrifice yourself, God incarnate for us. And today, Jesus, we live in that reality that you've made a way. You've paid the way. You, as Peter said, bore our sins on your body so that we could come to you. And today, Jesus, we're grateful that we get to come together as your body to celebrate that you're alive, that your power is available. And we pray that you would help us to expect your power today through the songs that we sing, through the word that you've given us, through our interaction together, Jesus, that your power would transform us today. And that we live this week, the holy week that that you walked that last week on earth, that we live in mind of your death, your burial, your resurrection that changes us forever. It's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Hello and good morning, TFBC family. We are so excited to be able to worship with you this morning, whether you're joining us in person or online through our live stream. We are excited that you are here. We are also grateful for your sacrificial giving that funds every area of ministry here at our church, and it keeps the mission of TFBC on the move to reach anyone into a growing relationship with Jesus. You can give this morning through our website, which is www.tequestaschurch.net, by clicking the Give tab at the top of the homepage on our website there. Or if you're in person this morning, you can also give in person as well through either of the two offering boxes that we have at the east and west entrances of our church building. As you know, Easter is coming up very soon on Sunday, April 17th. We're going to be having two services at 9 a.m. and at 10.30 a.m. and then the Easter egg hunt for our kids in between at 10.10 10 a.m. And we have a lot of different volunteer and serve opportunities for you, such as welcoming or helping out with our Easter egg hunt. If you would like to serve, we would love to get you plugged in and involved. You can go to our website and go to the Easter page on our website and you can find the volunteer form there. Or you can also sign up in person this morning at our Next Step Center. We have some Easter signups there for you to check out and fill out as well. Hey, if you're not involved in a small group, we would love for you to check out the list of small groups that we have happening at our church right now. Our men's and our women's groups are both continuing to meet every Tuesday night. We would love for you to get involved in a small group. You can check those out on our website also. And when you find a group that you think fits you best, you can click that reply button and we can get you connected with a small group leader. Also, we would love for you to save the day of May 15th. We're gonna be having another beach baptism where we invite all of our church family to come out. If you're interested in being baptized or if you know someone who would be interested in being baptized, let us know. You can reach out to us through one of those connect cards. And remember, May 15th, we're gonna be having that beach baptism at Carlin Park, so save the date for that. TFBC, again, we are so excited to be able to worship with you this morning. Let's stand up and let's continue to worship together. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance. From my enemies Till all my fears are gone And 
I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child. my mother's womb you have chosen me the past called my name and I've been born again into your family your blood flows through my veins and I'm no longer a slave For I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear For I am a child of God I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear
When the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in When I look at the space between Where I used to be in this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever need reminding What power set me free There is a cross that bears the burden When another died for me There is another And it's reckoning I know I will never be alone There'll be another in the fire Standing next to me There'll be another in the waters Holding back the seas Should I ever need reminding The power is setting me free I count the joy from every count the joy in the battle or we can count the joy in the struggle because we know that we're not alone, Father. We know that you're always with us. 
regardless of how we're feeling. Father, I pray that we cling to that this morning. I pray that you open our hearts to have what Pastor Mike has to say, Lord, that we would just remember that you're always with us, Father. We love you so much and pray all this in your name. Amen. You may be seated. Sometimes we feel isolated, lonely, powerless. So did Elijah. He learned to trust God in his circumstances. God had the power for Elijah's moment, and he has the power for yours. So like I said, today we wrap up Elijah. God has power for his moment in your life. And last week, we talked through the opposition that each of us face. All of us face opposition. All of us have critics. All of us have haters. All of us have enemies. And we face opposition from people that we love, from our family, from our friends. We face opposition from our culture. But if we allow it to, remember, Elijah shows us that opposition reveals the power of God. And so today we start Holy Week, Palm Sunday, that leads us to Easter. I hope that you're here next week if you're not out of town. I hope that you're thinking about people you can invite to be here, to hear this story, that the stone is rolled away. And the story of Palm Sunday, and really the story of Elijah today, is a story of unmet expectations, a story of a jarring turn of events. So let's jump into God's Word, fire up your Bible app, turn with me, 1 Kings chapter 19. Remember, at TFPC, we believe that these are the very words of God. They don't just contain God's words. They are the essence of who God is, his DNA, his visions, his dream. Isaiah 40 says that the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord endures forever. So let's read God's word, 1 Kings 19, 1 through 3. We jump back into the story of Elijah. It says, Ahab told Jezebel, all that Elijah had done, and how he killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them, the prophets, by this time tomorrow. Then he, Elijah, was afraid, and he arose, and he ran for his life, and he came to Be'er Shabbat which belongs to Judah, and he left his servant there. Have you ever been surprised? Have you ever been shocked by a turn of events in your life? Maybe you had a vacation plan, like super highly rated Verbo, super highly rated Airbnb hotel. Like you've been looking at this date on the calendar. You've been looking forward to it. Like this was going to be the trip that gets you back on track, that replenishes you. You get there and the place is gross. Like it's terrible and it's just horrible. And it, that cloud of like filth in your place like just shrouds your whole trip. Or maybe you had something that you expect to go this way and it just totally went in a different direction. Maybe you thought you were going to have one baby and you went to ultrasound, and it was two. Like, I love those, like, gender reveals, or, or when the dad's looking at the ultrasound, when he finds out he's having quadruplets. Like, he thought he was having one. Like, surprise, you're having four kids at once. Awesome. Or maybe you thought you were going to have an experience that was going to be life-changing. It was the thing you needed. It was the thing that would turn your life around. It was the thing that would fulfill you. It was the thing that you were missing. It was the thing that would complete you. Maybe you thought it would be moving to a different city, getting this job, marrying this person, marrying another person. Maybe you thought it would be this relationship. Maybe you thought it would be retiring or slowing down or whatever. And you go through that experience and afterwards you're kind of just the same. Unmet expectations, a turn of fate a twist in the direction of your life. What you thought, what you dreamed of would fulfill your appetites just kind of came back lacking. And this is the story of Elijah in 1 Kings 19. It's the story of Palm Sunday as 
Jesus' closest followers thought this was it. This was their time. He's welcomed as king only to be this jarring turn of event on Thursday night and Friday, or the, his arrest and crucifixion. Okay, so get inside the mind of Elijah. Try to get inside his thoughts. Try to get inside his skin. Try to feel what he would be feeling. Remember last week, he encounters this huge opposition. 450 prophets of Baal versus him, the lone prophet of God. And Elijah goes out and he risks, he says, hey, let's have a contest. Whoever answers, whichever God answers, let's follow him. If it's Baal, we'll follow God. If it's Yahweh, the God of Israel, we'll follow him, remember? And so Elijah has this contest. It's 450 to 1. The fire from heaven falls when Elijah prays for it. They get rid of the prophets of Baal. And then on top of that, we didn't read this. Remember, there's been this debilitating, destructive, lethal drought for three years because Israel is not following God. And so God says, hey, you want to chase Baal? Well, guess what? I control the rain, and it will not rain until I said it rains. And so after Elijah wins this showdown with the prophets of Baal, he goes and he prays for rain. And guess what? It rains. And then on top of that, Elijah sees that it's going to rain. He tells Ahab it's going to rain, and Elijah physically, literally outruns King Ahab's chariot back to where they're going. This guy in this like super weird robe and like camel's hair pulls it up. He pulls Usain Bolt, you know, roadrunner, pieces out Ahab as he runs by and beats him back as the rain and the drought is over. But then we get to these verses and Jezebel hears what has happened and what Elijah was up to and how Elijah killed the prophet's of Baal. And in a stunning act of hard-heartedness, after seeing and experiencing these miraculous displays of God's power in the fire and in the rain, she sends a messenger to threaten Elijah and says, I am making a vow on my life to my God that if you are not dead tomorrow, if you're not removed from the earth, that they can kill me. So the real leader of the nation, Jezebel, the one who really calls the shots, she threatens Elijah's life, and he's scared, and he runs. Like, what? Like, we just read chapter 18, like these massive victories, right? This is the thing that Elijah prayed for. This is the thing that he had been waiting for. And it wasn't like something that happened quietly, like just him and God. It happened publicly in front of the whole nation. Fire fell. Rain fell. And even though Elijah, maybe the most famous Old Testament prophet, he is prophesied, I told you guys, in another uh, Old Testament prophet book that someone like Elijah would come to be the hype man, to be the precursor of the Messiah, would end up being John the Baptist. Elijah, the New Testament tells us, was with Moses on the transfiguration of Jesus when Jesus revealed himself to his three closest disciples. Elijah was one of two people. Literally only two people have never died. Elijah is one of them. And Elijah in this moment, because of unmet expectations, he splits and he leaves. And you have to think, you have to speculate as you think about if you were Elijah and the text tells us, this is not what Elijah thought would happen after chapter 18. You have to think Elijah thought something different would happen, a different play would be run, that the people would welcome Elijah back. They'd start worshiping God back. Ahab and Jezebel would kind of get on the right path. Surely, right, after seeing the fire of God, after seeing the rain, he wouldn't have to live down by the river being fed by birds. He wouldn't have to live with a widow only having one meal a day. Is there going to be food tomorrow? Finally, he'd be able to go back to normal. But then something unexpected happens. What do you do? What do I do 
when we find ourselves with these unmet expectations. Like Elijah, like Jesus' followers. So the words of God here from 1 Kings 19, they're going to reveal our main idea for us today. Here it is. That God uses unmet expectations to reveal his heart and his plan to you. God uses unmet expectations to reveal himself, his heart, and his plan for your life. So to help us grasp this truth, I have three truths for us today. And the first one is this. Unmet expectations sometimes, or I'm sorry, excuse me, many times God's plan is unsettling, which helps us to see here that unmet expectations sometimes lead to despair. So here's the deal. As Elijah sees that what he thought would happen just flame out, literally, and then he has to run, he goes into this dark place. And many times we've been taught, maybe you've been taught this, maybe you've heard, I've heard this before in many different arenas of church or Christian teaching, that the safest place to be is in God's will. Like there's this like super hedge of protection zone that if you can like find the center of God's will, you're going to be safe and you're going to be protective. But we find from the story that it's actually not true. Many of you have read C.S. Lewis's kids' books, you know, The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, or you've at least like watched it on Disney+, Plus, right? And there's this moment where Lucy is going to meet Aslan, the lion, the king, the representation of, of Christ. And Lucy's having this conversation with the beaver, which is supposed to be normal, right? And Lucy says, is he safe? Is Aslan safe? Like, I'm kind of intimidated meeting a live lion that talks, right? That's supposed to be like Jesus. And the beaver says, is he safe? Of course he's not safe, but he's good. And we see here through the story of Elijah that our God is not safe, but he's good. And his plans sometimes unsettle us, and that leads us to despair. Let's keep going. I want to read verse 4. Elijah gets to. He himself, Elijah, went a day's journey into the wilderness, and he came and sat down under a broom tree, actually died. This guy that shows up in the New Testament with Jesus and Moses because of unmet expectations in his life, he says, I want to die. I want to give up. I'm done. I'm no better than anyone else. And the truth is, Elijah was spent, right? Think about his life. He lived on the edge for years. He lives down by the river. He lives with this widow, all this pressure, all this anxiety, everybody thinking that it's his fault because Ahab is telling everybody that, all this pressure of God's people worshiping other gods, and finally says, hey, I'm no better than any of the other prophets. I'm no better than my fathers. I can't do it anymore, God. I'm done. I give up. Let me die. And how many of us have been there? We thought this was going to happen. We knew this was going to happen. We gut it out. We give all that we can. We leave it all in the field. We empty the tank, and it doesn't work out. And we're left in despair. Or we get sucker punched by a diagnosis. We lose someone that we love. Unmet expectations, turns of events, things that we didn't think or know could happen. And the truth is, we're in a moment now of serious mental health crisis. If you talk to anybody that talks to other people, there are so many people in our culture, in our region, in our church that are in despair. This weird life that we're in, our new normal, is a life of unmet expectations. People are on the edge. 
And the truth is, I've been there before, because guess what? I don't have what it takes. I don't have enough. Whatever skills, education, energy I have, it's finite. And, and, and even though it seems cruel, many times God uses the unex, unmet expectations in my life to reveal his heart and his plan. I mean, even Jesus, the night he was betrayed, knowing what lie ahead. The physical punishment, sure, but knowing the spiritual weight that he would take on full brunt of the wrath and consequences of God from every human being that had ever lived, even though he knew that this was God's plan. Paul says before the foundation of the world, he's in the garden begging God for another way sweating blood. So Elijah, at the end of himself, he walks 40 miles from the northern part of Israel to the southern kingdom of Judah, and he walks another day out into the wilderness by himself, and he's trying to give up. But in despair, because of these unmet expectations, we're going to see that then God responds in unexpected ways. Look at our third truth, or second truth, excuse me. God uses unmet expectations to gently redirect you. God uses unmet expectations to gently redirect. Let's look at verses 6 through 8. It says, And he looked, Elijah, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water, and he ate and drank, and he lay down. Verse 7, And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose, ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mount of God. Notice here that God knows you better than you know yourself. And also notice that almost anything can be solved with a snack. Like God put that in there, right? (laughs) But look how God talks to Elijah. He's not like, Elijah, suck it up. Elijah, what are you doing out here? Like, you should be stronger than that. Like, get up. What's wrong with you, Elijah? No. He sends an angel twice to feed him to encourage him, to let him know that he cared, that he's watching. And then he sends Elijah on a journey to a familiar place to uh, the people of God. And so Elijah, he makes his way further into the desert, 40 days. And and notice the rich symbolism here. The people of Israel, God, wander for 40 years in the wilderness. And God leads Elijah to the same mountain that he led Moses. When Moses saw the physical manifestation of God and received the law and the Ten Commandments, God's revelation to his people. God's using the unmet expectations to draw Elijah in and to reveal his heart of who he is and his plan for Elijah's life. And maybe today you're here and you're feeling the weight and sting and despair of unmet expectations. All of us have so many expectations placed on us. It's astounding how many people I talk to are living for other people who may not even be alive anymore, who may not even be watching what they're doing. Maybe you're here today and you have expectations put on you by your family, by your your parents. Maybe you're here and you're living under expectations that culture has put on us, to have this or to be this or to accomplish this or to do this. Or maybe you're here and you've put such high expectations on yourself, you always think of yourself as a failure and you can't live 
under the weight of your own expectations for your life. But all the while, even though, like I said, it can feel cruel, God is letting you sit under that weight so that he can come in and draw you back to his heart and redirect you to his plan. So Elijah goes out to Mount Horeb, which is also Mount Sinai. And look at verses 8, and then we're going to jump down to verse 11. Verse 8. I already read verse 8, sorry. Jump down to verse 11. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak. And he went out, and he stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with a sword. I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel to be king over Syria, and Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of really hard names, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escapes from the sword of Haziel shall Jehu put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha put to death. Verse 18. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So God, at this holy mountain, the mountain that Moses gathered the tablets, the mountain that the people of Israel saw the cloud and heard thunderous voices, speaks to Elijah. But God shows Elijah and he shows us God doesn't always work in the miraculous, in the fireballs, in the extreme windstorms, in the miracles of drought and bringing people back from the dead. God doesn't show up in the wind. He doesn't show up in the fire. He doesn't show up in the earthquake, he shows up in the whisper. The whisper is where God spoke. The whisper is where God revealed his plan to Elijah. And what was God's plan for judging Ahab and Jezebel and for keeping 7,000 people? Elijah was not the only one who wasn't worshiping Baal, keeping a people for himself. It was other ordinary people. And it was Elijah pouring into another ordinary person, a prophet, Elijah. That's our last truth. God many times uses ordinary methods to accomplish his extraordinary ways. I want to be like Elijah on Mount Carmel with fire falling and everybody knowing who's the guy calling down the fire and it be overtly obvious to everybody, outrunning my enemies and flashing a peace sign to them as I outrun them. But the truth is, over and over again, God can work in extraordinary ways, and he does, miraculous ways. But over and over again, even as you read the Bible, the truth is that many times God uses ordinary methods. He used Jehu to judge Ahab and Jezebel and to kick them out. He used the king of Assyria to judge Ahab and kill Ahab in battle. He used Elisha behind Elijah to come and help Israel. And all throughout Scripture, God's used normal people like Abraham and like Jacob and Daniel and David and Mary and Joseph and Peter and Philip and doubting Thomas. And so today, are you wallowing in unmet expectations? Or are you wondering what God is up to in your life or in your family or in our world? 
God does have a moment for you. It's, these are all his moments that he wants to give you his power to live before him like Elijah. And he wants to use these unmet expectations that we all have in our life to draw you in, to show you his heart, to show you his care, and to reveal his plan to you. God wants to care for you. God wants to power you. God wants to redirect your despair to hope. And God wants to bring people around you to help you live the moment, live the life that he has for you right now today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for these stories that that you put in the Bible for us from almost 3,000 years ago. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the real humanity that you display through Elijah, even though he was a powerful prophet and he saw and did miraculous things over and over and over and over again. You tell us through James that he was a man like us. He felt fear and he felt despair and he felt hopelessness, but Jesus, we're grateful that in those moments when we're weak, you can be strong. In those moments when we're at the end of ourselves, when we come to the end of our skills, our education, our resources, you want to draw us back to look to yours. And maybe you're here today and you've never placed your life on Jesus. You've never felt Jesus' care the way that we talked about, the way that Elijah felt God's care, wooing him back. Today, you can start a relationship with him by coming to the end of yourself, saying, I surrender, Jesus. My ways are broken. They're, They're wrong. I'm a sinner. I've wronged you. And I want to bank my life on you. I want to turn I want to trust your finished work, your death, your burial, and your resurrection. And maybe you're here today, you're a follower of Jesus, but you're paralyzed or you're living in regret. You feel like you've missed the turn that you were supposed to take. And today, God's here to tell you, I want to make you new. I want to show you my heart. I want to show you my plan. So today, TFPC, let's lean in together. Jesus, help us to lean in together into your heart and into your plan. You're the good Father. You're the, you're the comfort of the Holy Spirit that wants to guide us and lead us to the moment that you've given us to in our life. It's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Would you stand and sing with us? And this is how I find my battles. 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 surrounded but I'm surrounded by you it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you this is how I find my battles This is how I fight my battles And this is how I fight my battles And this is how I fight my battles It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm 
surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. We need you to take the unmet expectations we have and show your goodness to us. God, would you be with us in each step of this week? Would we look to you to be our strength? We thank you that, that we can rely on you. You are the rock of ages. We pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you. You're dismissed.